So, he got something very interesting going on here. On the one hand, you have minorities of Americans saying that they approve of the way, and sometimes very small minorities, right? Minorities of Americans saying that they approve of the way that Congress is handling its job as an institution, presumably. That's what they're thinking about, right? And on the other hand, you have majorities of Americans who are saying that they approve of the way that their individual representatives or senators are handling their jobs. And I want you to just appreciate what that means. Uh, I want to show you a map here uh, real quick, and then I'll get back on track. This is a map. Boy, if you couldn't see that at trend line uh, out there at Richmond, you probably can't see the district lines drawn on this map. Um, you might have to like get up really close to the screen, like press your nose up against the screen. Everybody line up and take their turn at the screen to see that. Or you can just, again, you could probably just go out and look, you know, Google a map of U.S. House districts or something like that. You can see, uh, if you look really hard, you can see that there are a bunch of little squiggly lines drawn across all these states here. That's representing the congressional districts. In t there are 435 of these in total, right? There are 435 seats in the U.S. House of Representatives. That means that there are 435 House districts. And by the way, 36 of those are in Texas. I didn't mean to do that. Uh, bear with me for just a second. 36 of those are in Texas. So here's a close-up showing the congressional district lines in Texas. And obviously, because the, po the basis of representation uh, in the House of Representatives is population, and because population is not evenly distributed across either the entire country or an individual state, some of these districts are geographically going to be very small and some of, are, some of them are going to be very large. <clears throat> Notice, for example, down here in the Houston area, if you can see way down here where I'm pointing the, the cursor, you can see that here in the Houston area there are something like uh, five districts. Just in All of that is, I think, contained within Harris County. But in the greater Houston area, which would include you know, um, Fort Bend County and, you know, up here maybe Montgomery County and Brazoria County and Galveston County. You, you have a number of others, so maybe as many as seven or eight congressional districts down here in the greater Houston area. And then you go out here to West Texas and you see districts like District 23, which is bigger than many states in the country geographically. But they are roughly equal in population, okay? Each of these districts... The, the key, with the key word there being roughly, it's certainly not exact. Okay. For example, let me show you what I'm talking about here. Just very quickly, I'm going to call up this website. Let's look at um, let's look at the uh, population of. Uh, well, I just mentioned District 23. That's the that's that district out of West Texas that has uh, uh, so many square miles. Just all, all those square miles that you were looking at a moment ago. Um, this is a website maintained by the U.S. Census Bureau, so I think I'm fairly trust, I'm going to trust the numbers here that we see. There's District 23 out there in West Texas, and you can see the population of uh, that district, make it a little bit bigger so that you can see it better. The population of that district is um, about 750,000. Okay. Now I'm going to look at, let's look at the district just next door to that. That's District 16, which includes El Paso. So we're going to look at District 16, and you can see that District 16 has 741,000. So it's only, different of, uh, only a difference of about 6,000. Okay. But there are some districts that have a little bit more. For example, um, here in the Sugar Land area, we're in District 22. Okay, and you can see that the population of that district is about 860,000. Okay, and then some states, notice that, um, let me go back here. Notice that some states, like say North Dakota or Montana or Wyoming, these states up here, there, there's only one congressional district in Montana. The entire state is a congressional district. Okay, so my guess is, I, I haven't looked at this, but my guess is that the population of Montana is probably going to be a little bit more than that. I could be wrong, but let, let's, see what I, let's see what we got here. Um, my guess is it's probably a little, maybe around a million. Oh, yeah, it's a little over a million. Okay, so that's a little bit larger district than what we see around Texas, for example. Most of the districts are going to be around 750,000 in Texas. Okay, with a couple of exceptions. But anyway, so they're roughly equal in populations. I, I just want to you know, make sure that 
we've emphasized that word roughly enough. Okay, so it, here's the here are the um, we have a in this ITV class we have several different locations. So uh, out here in Sugarland we are in the 22nd congressional district, and you can see that the representative from this district, District 22, is a Republican by the name of Pete Olson. Those of you at Rice High School, okay, you're in District 10, and your representative in Congress is Michael McCall, uh, who is also a Republican. That district is kind of interesting looking. Maybe we can look at that in just a second, because that goes, actually, that District 10 goes from sort of northwest Houston all the way to Austin, okay? And then down there in uh, Louise, Brandon, you are uh, in District 27. And your representative is Blake Farenthold, also a representative uh, from Corpus Christi. And there you see the names of the two senators, which we've already touched on. And here's that District 10 that I'm talking about. For, for you guys out there at um, Rice High School, you can see that it, it really stretches from northwest Houston over to the Austin area. And what is, um, is Altair, I guess it's, you know, almost... Um, Maybe maybe a little bit over to the Houston side, but uh, pretty close to the center of that district. Okay. Anyway, I'm just real, trying to give you a, a sort of a handle on what the congressional districts look like. But the more important point I'm trying to get to is this. Okay. You know, I started with the observation that Gallup tells us, and other polling organizations who ask these kinds of questions of a random sample of Americans. You know, do you approve or disapprove of the way that Congress is handling its job? My guess is that most of the people out there in the 10th Congressional District or in the 22nd Congressional District or in the, what was the other one, 27th Congressional District, my guess is that majorities of people in each of these three districts would probably say, consistent with the rest of the country, that they disapprove of the way that Congress is handling its job. But if you ask the people in the 22nd Congressional District, do you approve of the way that Pete Olson is handling his job as a representative? If the numbers hold true, then a majority of people in the 22nd Congressional District are going to say, yeah, I think Pete Olson's doing a great job. Or out there in the 10th Congressional District, yeah, I think Michael McCall is doing a great job. Or I think represented in the 27th Congressional District, I think Representative Farenthold is, Farenthold is doing a great job. 